I, I know all of you are still enjoying this delicious lunch. Continue to. It's being served. Uh, as Mark said earlier, you know, this is very much a, a working lunch because we have so much to cover. And uh, first of all, I just want to thank all of you for being with us today. Uh, I know all of you have busy schedules, and it's just so thrilling to look out across this vast room and see all of you who care deeply about connecting people to nature. So thank you so much for being with us and for your wonderful support. Um, I want to extend a, a special uh, welcome to uh, the Conserve Lake County community. And as many of you may know, in January of this year, the Countywide Land Trust in Lake County, Conserve Lake County, merged into Open Lands. And we're very excited about that renewed commitment that we have and investment in a very important county in our metropolitan region. So welcome to all of you. But it's now my great pleasure uh, to introduce someone who really needs no introduction in this room, I assure you. Uh, an elected official, uh, a civil servant who has just been a champion in the environment throughout his long and distinguished career. And that is our senior senator, Senator Dick Durbin, who is with us today. Thanks, Jerry. It is um, an honor to be here, but I want to single out someone who has been my partner, your friend, and a great advocate for conservation and for the environment in the 15 plus years that she has served as our state's attorney general. Give it up for Lisa Madigan. Lisa, I know you're here. deserve every bit of it, the best. When I was a kid in college, I got a job as an intern in an office of United States Senator Paul Douglas. This kind of dates me, I know. <laughs> an extraordinary man, PhD in economics, teacher, professor at the University of Chicago, city alderman, then elected to the United States Senate after a, a amazing career serving in the Marine Corps during World War II. And he had a wonderful, wonderful career in the United States Senate. And at the end of his career, Douglas said, when I was a young man, I wanted to save the world. When I got elected to the United States Senate, I just wanted to save Illinois. Now at this stage in my career, all I want to save are the Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore. For the record, and some of you historians know it, he had to fight every possible political and economic interest in the state of Indiana to save the Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore, and he did. His name is on a trail. We'll never get much more out of our Indiana friends to recognize his effort. But I know that that spirit of Paul Douglas is in this room today at each and every table and your feelings about conservation and the environment. I know it because I've worked with you I think back a few years, the Heckmatack Wildlife Refuge in McHenry County. Do we have some folks here from that area? What a beautiful, beautiful effort. I want to thank all those in the room who made that possible. Our, our uh, obligation, our responsibility is to leave the next generation a better world than we found. You are dedicated to that, and I'm honored to be here and say thank you. Thank you, Senator. Fantastic. And uh, we can't thank you enough for all that you've done, but especially Hackmatack National Wildlife Refuge, uh, the first in our metropolitan area. And without the Senator's support, it would not have happened. So we thank you so much. Um, you know, a favorite quote of mine comes from uh, the Russian novelist Leo Tolstoy. Uh, and it is, one of the first conditions of happiness is that the link between man and nature shall not be broken. You know, and at Open Lands, we measure our success not so much by acres saved, although that's significant, but uh, really it's more by the number of people who are engaged. And, you know, since our founding, uh, now over 55 years ago, 
we've worked very hard to maintain that link, to reestablish it in many times between humans and nature. And of course, we're part of nature. Um, we were founded by the Welfare Council of Metropolitan Chicago, a pioneer conservation group, because at that time it wasn't seen as a, a, a focus for conservation, a large city, suburbs, you know, metropolitan area. Um, we feel strongly that nature is vital to everyone and it should be close to where they live and at all different scales, you know, be it the tree in front of your apartment house or house, the neighborhood garden, a green schoolyard, uh, our parks, our forest preserves, our trails and greenways, large landscapes like Hackmatack or Medewan National Tallgrass Prairie. Um, today, you know, we face probably the greatest challenges that we ever have as a planet. Uh, Julia alluded to already, and that is climate change. And of course, that was underscored dramatically with the recent report from the United Nations. Um, you know, there's an urgency, and, and we know that we have kind of a moral and an ethical responsibility to do something, but the message is so daunting, and the challenge is so great, it's really difficult to figure out what can we do that makes a difference? You know, how can we address this as citizens, as community groups, as organizations, as units of government? Um, but, you know, we've stepped back at Open Lands and we realize that 35% of the carbon mitigation can be secured through nature-based solutions. And so Open Lands and many of our colleague organizations are working hard doing things that do make a difference, a huge difference, but we don't talk about it that way. We don't place it in that context. Just by preserving land, by removing it from the development equation, by restoring ecosystems that they function well, by replanting the urban forest, greening school campuses, doing so much more. We're, sequ you know, we're sequestering carbon, we're dealing with heat islands, we're absorbing storm water, we're improving quality of life, and by engaging community in all of that, we're building advocates for nature as well. And of course today, you know, with 80%, more than 80% of Americans living in metropolitan areas, we have to engage these audiences. They're us. And we're the ones long term who are going to make a huge difference. You know, for 55 years, Open Lands has guided our region towards sustainability. We are now committed to guiding our region through a climate, uh, through a changing climate. A, a week ago, uh, Brookfield Zoo presented Open Lands with its Edith Rockefeller McCormick Partnership Award. We we're very, very honored, but especially, oh, thank you. <laughs> Hello, how are you doing? Hello there, hello there. Um, especially because of the partnership piece of it. I mean, that's how we get our work done. We always have from our founding, strong and meaningful partnerships with citizen groups, with colleague organizations, with units of government, with business and industry. And a wonderful example of creative partnerships that's gaining a lot of attention uh, around the country, in fact, around the world, is our Space to Grow program. Um, as many of you know, in Chicago, our schoolyards are asphalt and concrete, hostile environments, often in flood-prone neighborhoods. Uh, they're heat islands, um, many of them in underserved communities, and yet they're the heart and soul of that neighborhood. And so our program partner is the Healthy Schools Campaign, a wonderful organization that looks at the total wellness of, of students. But we have three very important capital partners as well, and that's the Metropolitan Water, <coughs> excuse me, Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago, the Chicago Department of Water Management, and Chicago Public Schools. So we're totally transforming these campuses by working with another key partner, and that is the school community in the surrounding neighborhood. They really designed this, and so we have outdoor classrooms, learning environments, opportunities for play and recreation, green infrastructure that's absorbing water, that's dealing with heat and a variety of other things, but also that really improves the quality of life, not only for the students, but for the neighborhood as a whole. And there's agreement between CPS and the neighborhood that these green campuses, these green schoolyards then function as parks when school is not in session. And in fact, tomorrow, we're dedicating our 14th at Morton School. So a very exciting program, uh, thank you. I, I think the power of it is demonstrated by the partnerships that we're beginning to develop internationally. Paris is modeling a program based on ours. We're collaborating. London 
and Rotterdam. So that's pretty exciting. Um, we heard about the role of trees. Julia spoke to it eloquently. I don't need to remind any of you about the roles that they play in our lives and our environment. Uh, you know, it's so critical that we address climate in a variety of ways, and obviously a very direct one, an important one, is uh, through restoring, preserving, rebuilding our urban forest. And uh, over the past five years, through our Tree Keeper program, which is um, a core of volunteers, many are with us today, over 2,000 who dedicate uh, their volunteer time to mulch, prune, water, and now plant trees as well. And over the past five years, we've planted over 5,000 trees in 66 Chicago neighborhoods and, and three suburbs. But this is part of a much bigger initiative as well, the Chicago Region Trees Initi Tree Initiative. This is looking at the seven county area at the urban forest in a comprehensive way. It's led by Morton Arboretum with many partners and we're proud to be one of the leaders in that initiative. What we're looking at you know, is how we can take our tree keeper program and develop chapters outside of Chicago. Because we know long term that it's the community engagement that makes the difference that will make sure that these trees survive and remain healthy and contribute you know, to our environment, to our quality of life. And we thank you, Julia, and MacArthur Foundation for that extraordinary vote of confidence, that wonderful commitment. And of course, invite all of you, as she did, to support our work uh, with our forestry efforts. Um, just last week, again, October 10th, the Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning, uh, CMAP, which is our regional planning organization, uh, they adopted and launched uh, their new strategic plan on to 2050. Um, and open lands with many partners from Chicago Wilderness played a very important role in shaping the policies and recommendations outlined there related to the environment. Um, we've often, open lands through our history, been kind of a bridge between the more traditional conservation community and uh, regional or urban planning. Um, and we know that one of the biggest investments that we make that shapes growth and development is in transportation, in roads. Um, we also know that uh, transportation is the greatest source of carbon emissions in the United States. So we want to make sure that those investments are the right ones. Um, and uh, unfortunately, many of them aren't. And there are two of them that we've been battling, or one we've been battling, one we're starting to address in a significant way with many partners. The first is the Ileana Tollway. Um, both on the ground and in the community and in the courts, you know, fighting this with our wonderful partners, uh, the Sierra Club and the Environmental Law and Policy Center and many community groups as well. This would have disastrous impact in Will County on Madewan, our national tall grass prairie, on so many other significant natural resources and on prime farmland, and it makes no economic or transportation sense. So that's one. We've been fighting for a long time. We will continue to. A more recent proposal is the extension of Route 53 in what they're calling the Tri-State Access in Lake and McHenry Counties. Senator, this would go right through Hackmatack, through Glacial Park. You remember when we were there dedicating it? Uh, it would impact Volo Bog, other critical natural resources, and in Lake County, uh, uh, the, uh, the um, Liberty Prairie Reserve, you know, which is a 5,000-acre public-private partnership. So uh, we're building that coalition with partners. It just can't happen. It's really uh, something that would have disastrous impacts and again makes little transportation sense. But I I'd like to share with you just a very brief little video here that underscores Open Land's commitment uh, to this metropolitan region, the region that we all call home. At Open Lands, we commit to strong policy and land preservation initiatives to protect the natural and open spaces of the three-state region. We commit to protecting priority landscapes by bringing all our resources to work for healthy land, water, and people. These special places include a young and growing national wildlife refuge, the most populous county in Illinois, and the county with the most biodiversity and the largest tract of open space in northeastern Illinois. 
we commit to building advocates for nature by working with communities to strengthen conservation efforts and increase our region's resilience. We offer positive learning and recreational experiences with nature. And we invite thousands of dedicated volunteers to teach, plant gardens, lead tours, count species, and amplify our calls for change. We commit to advancing nature-based solutions to climate change because cities and metropolitan regions can and must robustly implement solutions to this growing threat. We restore grasslands and plant trees to remove carbon from the atmosphere. We work to reduce flooding and bring shade to neighborhoods. And we ensure that farmland, trails, parks, and preserves link our region together in a vibrant web of green that allows plant and animal species to move and adapt. At Open Lands, we commit to making our region a healthy home for everyone. We can't do it without you. Thank you for your commitment to Open Lands. Well, a special thank you to Bill Curtis for lending not only his voice, but his great support to all of our work. Uh, Bill and Donna are both recipients of Open Lands Conservation Leadership Award back in 2009, and they both do so much to support nature and the environment here in our region, throughout the country, and really around the, the globe. Thank you so much, Bill and Donna. <laughs>